Hey everybody, we're gonna kill a little bit of time while people filter in. I was just over on Rob's chat, so if you guys were over there, maybe you'll hop over here. Um, a lot of friendly names and faces over there. So uh, yeah, sorry I'm a little bit late. I noticed Rob was chatting and I didn't wanna cut over fellow YouTubers who uh, definitely have a bigger presence than me, so I just wanna make sure I'm not uh, cutting in on anyone's time on other YouTube channels and stuff like that. So, hey, what's up, Tilapia Store? How's it going, man? How's Florida? We'll just wait for some people to filter in and shoot the breeze, as it were. Uh, today, it is beautiful out here in Seattle. Let me flip this around so you can see. We've got a little peekaboo view from our deck out here, and the Olympic Mountains look awesome. It's sunny out, so, yep. It's a good it's a good day. My wifey's here. We went out to breakfast this morning and she's going for a walk in the neighborhood. So let's start talking about fish stuff. How goes it, Viola hops a lot? Uh welcome, good to see you again. So I wanted to talk about first and foremost, I'm gonna update you guys on my crib situation, and that's K R I B not a uh, crib with babies in it. So here are the cribs. As you may know, whoa, they were in, as somebody joked online, but it was pretty fitting, uh, Fish ICU. And four days ago now, I came up to the tank and my cribs were basically, uh, so let, I'll turn up the light a little bit right now but I've been keeping it low as to not stress out the fish. So hold on one minute. Hey, sub from Rob's stream. Awesome, man. Well, welcome. The more, the merrier. Rob and I now. Hey, t -Hang. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, Rob and I now, the secret is out. We will be teaming up. I've been chatting with him a little bit, and uh, I didn't want to say anything the other night when I mentioned that I had something in the works, but that is the something, and, uh, yeah, so I will be, I'll be teaming up, what's up, Fishman, 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 uh, Mad Fish Diva, welcome, how's it going, come on in, uh, so, I was curious, I'm just gonna, like, as people are trickling in, the things I wanted to touch base on, uh, in this chat are how I basically resuscitated one of the cribs that was like, it was so lifeless that I could poke him. Rock in talks. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, so this guy here, I still haven't named them and I really should. They're my favorite fish. So these are, uh, Tiniatus or Pelvicochromus Tiniatus Nigerian red subspecies. And, uh, the male here is still breathing heavier. Ooh, if you notice, he's breathing more rapidly. And he has a little bit of a glazed eye. Ugh. Man, YouTube makes it so awful to try to zoom in and out of stuff. But they have this beautiful leopard print, and when they are spawning, they actually uh, team up and they get the same coloration. So see that purple uh, lila, or... Uh, magenta or whatever you'd want to call that color and she's got yellow on her tail with the leopard print they matched up so his belly went from a dark darker purple up here color to that uh her color of her belly now she's been swimming around a little bit more but she's gotten shy he was so out of it four mornings ago let's see here this will be the test Awesome. I'm putting my finger in the tank and he ducked. So that is a huge improvement, as lame as that sounds. Uh, oh, he's coming to say hi to everybody. What's up, everybody? Um, so he's my favorite little dude. And uh, so the this is the, the male. The female is actually kind of hiding. Sorry, I'm dropping stuff. But uh, so in any case... He was, he's still breathing heavy, which I don't like. His color is back. Oh, his belly color is coming back a little bit. It had gone totally gray. And this is day four. And so when I first found him, 
Let's talk a little bit about this re-aquascape. Let me get a couple things out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got catapa leaves galore in there because it's kind of like aloe vera, plus it has an antifungal and an antibacterial property for fish. Helps their slime coats, plus also cribs actually eat plants quite a bit. Like They like plants more than they seem to like brine shrimp, these ones anyways. And so they will uh, munch through the leaf a little bit as like a, a calming anti -di or a you know digestive digestif digestif as they say in Europe. Um, but they're still hidden, and these cribs were definitely really really social cribs uh, as long as I've had them. And they have gone through the mating uh, or spawning process, which you can see in my other videos where they're really colored up like bright bright rainbow color. And uh, they have done that twice now, uh, laid eggs, and are they out when the lights are off? No. So lately, they're hiding. This is, I mean, he's colored up, but lately, they're hiding. When the lights are on, typically, they would be hanging out dead smack in the middle of the tank somewhere and together always together when i found the male uh first he was sick at the bottom down here I, I didn't have the filter here and i actually moved it to get some flow right by where he was hanging out in the tank the first day and then later on in the night he was laying on his side up here and i literally reached my hand in there and i thought he would move or swim because i could see he still was slowly treading water kind of thing and he didn't do anything I could have literally picked him up. I didn't want to hurt his slime coat, so I didn't do that. Uh, but I, I decided, oh man, he's on, he's on bad, bad, bad shape. I know it's not his swim bladder; it's something else. He hadn't been eating for the day before, and usually it's kind of hard to get them to eat, anyways. Like these two are kind of picky, and I don't know if that is because of where they're from. They, they are very close to wild generation-wise. And so I don't know if, if like it takes multiple generations to inherit all of those skills or if it's just one. I, I don't know. That's totally random. I don't know the answer to that. But for this couple, I have to, I've tried like five different foods and I have to drop them in and like one piece at a time wait for him to notice and maybe one or two will go past him and then he'll finally grab one and go. Uh, with the exception of spirulina, uh, veggie cichlid mix that's frozen. He likes that. Live stuff he likes, but he's pretty lazy. Uh, he's a peaceful fish. He doesn't nip at any of the other fish. The only thing he does is when he's healthy, he will lunge at these little uh, ruby tetras and guppies and uh, around the fish world. I just watched IFG medicated. Yeah. So <clears throat> let me tell you how I medicated them, and I'll tell you where we're at now. So basically I've been doing 20% water changes a day. These are new plants, relatively speaking. They, they came in the week that they got sick. And there is an aromatica plant in here that has a strong odor when it's out of water. And I wonder if maybe the cribs ate that and it upset their stomach, but you wouldn't think it would last four days. So now I'm kind of thinking it's not that, but maybe something came in. On the plants, I didn't do a salt dip, I didn't do a bleach dip, I just basically put the plants, which were, uh, I soaked them in the aquascaping contest and then I put them into this tank, uh, with some of them actually going into the tank in a separate bag the night before to keep them wet, even though they've been traveling. So, uh, I don't want to talk bad at all about H2O plants, he sent me lots of cool plants and they're all rad looking. I've kind of got a garden of his stuff right here. I'm sorry about the glare, guys. So this tank gets natural light for like an hour and a half a day, but it sure will light up the, the stone and the way the fish look. But the fact that he is moving up and down is a huge, huge improvement. Before, he was just at the bottom or floating at the top, unresponsive, burying himself in the weeds, and uh, yeah... Yeah, it's very odd that it's only affected the cribs, I know. And so I thought, because of people's advice too, maybe there's a water flow issue. And I, I did this whole aquascape recently. So let me block this sunbeam. I did this, yeah, awesome plants, Justin Spall. He's a, he's a 
cool guy. I mean, hard worker, independent starter. I always like supporting people who are starting from the ground up and just love what they do. Like, I mean, just like with Flip, him and I, uh, Rob and I are, are hoping to do some things. I like to talk about the history and the science of things. And I'd really want him to get a hold of some rare shrimp, even if they're not pretty or like bred yet. I would love to have some of the first hobby shrimp of different types into the country. I mean, there's shrimps out there like uh, volcano shrimp from, that's not their scientific name, they're, but they're from Hawaii. And they live in extremely sulfuric water with uh, very, very uh, acidic levels in it. And just some of these funky shrimp, it would be really cool to have uh, some of the first ones in the U.S. There's another one. Uh, there's a ninja shrimp that's a caradina that everybody uh, knows about who is into shrimp, which is like a striped black and white uh, caradina, like a Taiwan bee or something. Uh, I may not be speaking correctly. What's up, Waterbox? Welcome. And uh, I want the ninja shrimp. It's the slang term for a range of species but they're in micronesia all the way out to fiji and the solomon islands and they are a, a red shrimp that turns black instantly like if it gets startled it turns red or black one or the other and clear so i'd love to get my hands on some of those uh and i'm going to talk to rob about what we can do to try to get some of those into the country they do need like more brackish uh water but we'll figure it out i i think it's worthwhile to do they live a short life and i think that's partly why they haven't been in the hobby is you can't just breed them easily but i'm a, i'm a pretty uh, stubborn guy i was talking to patricia about her shrimp problem and then she bailed on me because my uh, because of this live stream it better be a good one her shrimp lives depend on hey patricia what's going on with your shrimp I would love to chat about it. We can all chat together because these cribs, I'll run it down while you write out your problem. I'll run down what I've been doing. I've been doing, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, a lot of people that I know have claimed to have come up with this combo, but basically erythromycin, uh, general cure, which has, uh, it has the uh, metronidazole and then the uh Prozac, oh, what, let's see, well, Chung, I was letting in on some info. Uh, down the wormhole, how's it going? That's a sweet beta picture that you got there. And Waterbox, by the way, dude, I love your editing and your your humor in your videos. That water, what was it, the water change, the steps to doing a water change video? That was hilarious, dude. Um, so, yeah, so I've got the... I'm deworming them, I'm de-parasiting them, which I don't think it is, honestly. I, I did pretty much everything except for uh, ick. I haven't treated them for ick. I also turned down the temperature. I have it, an oversized, man, the glare is awful on this tank. We'll hop to another tank soon. But I did an oversized, uh, if you can see it, it's this tall and this wide uh, sponge filter in this tank, which has been in here. And uh, yeah, 23 phases of water change. Yeah, I like that one. And then obviously I had the catapa leaves, but the male I started when he was in such dire straits, Patty's Aqua Worlds, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I had them in this ICU box as somebody coined it on my Things. So from now on, whenever I have fish uh, in ICU, this is one of the ways I live in a smaller apartment. So I can show you my whole house from here. So this is my house and a bedroom downstairs and a bathroom downstairs. So that's that's what I got to work with. We're not supposed to have fish here, but the landlord made a couple exceptions. Uh, so I've got 120 gallons of smaller tanks. Uh, and I would love to have many more like I used to. But I try to do videos on like making the most of what you can. So my updates try to be like what fish I'm doing, what I'm keeping, uh, and also visiting other people who keep fish. I've been keeping fish for 20, well, let me do the math on this, like 22 or 23 years and probably 10 years, I'd say seriously off and on making money from it and collecting odd odd fish and reptiles and um for a while i was into mammals too like flying squirrels and 
uh, things like that. So I just love animals. Uh, just put out a video on dealing with worms, etc. You might find that helpful. Yeah, I don't think it's worms. Um, so there are no, uh, there are no, uh, what are they called? Uh, I'm totally blanking on them. The 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 flat worms that everyone gets in their tank. Uh, there's not even any of that. There, I've got a microscope over here set up that I frequently examine my water. Also, if a, any fish dies, I will look at its gills. I will cut open its stomach and I will look at its stomach and I just try to figure out if anything went wrong that I could have stopped. If there were worms in there, anything like that. Uh, if there's uh, their if their skin like underneath their gills is irritated, if underneath their scale is irritated, or if that dermis underneath the scales, like below the scales, is irritated. So this male, he's still just kind of chugging along. But I turned down the temperature because I did have, if you can see that, it's in the like 76 range or so but i did have it all the way up to 82 to encourage spawning by the cribs and then i was putting fresh water in like crazy to simulate the wet season as well as having uh, a little less light going on i meant as far as internal worms swollen belly oh yeah totally um so the swollen belly on these cribs they ha always have super swollen bellies the female is even more intense. If you look at my other videos, she has a big belly and that's whenever she's spawning and she's tried to spawn with him three times now, like, and successfully twice they've laid eggs. Once snails got to it and another time, I don't know if he didn't fertilize it, but the eggs just never hatched and eventually she gave up on them. So I don't know what's up with this couple, but I do have six more in another tank that are young right now, but they are Maliwe or Maluwe. I don't know how you want to pronounce it, uh, but they're a Tiniata species. Also in the science uh, news business, it has now been changed once again from uh, tiniata, uh, Pelvica chromis tiniatus will now be uh, Pelvica chromis stripe cribensis and then the location most likely, or Tiniatus and then the location they're not a hundred percent on what they're gonna do But the whole big long name and the location it's too much They're not gonna bother with that anymore because now they're also finding that these species overlap and breed and there's different genetic issues going on like with you know one river may pour into another and then you've got half and half of the same uh, type and so the location isn't as useful especially as fish have been released in other locations but um, I also wanted to say the other things I've done in this tank other than the general cure and the erythmo erythromycin is I've lowered the temperature lowered the lights and then I've put air stones in and I had at one point three air stones at one point they were all in here with with him and I had a Catopoli fortress set up and he was in here but his his mate his partner couldn't see him and so she circled the tank for probably three or four hours when she wasn't sick and he was and then she came up here finally and this was turned this way and she slept all night along the grate so they have such a crazy bond. I know it's instinctual or whatever we want to say, but uh, yeah, so it's definitely uh, a really like, they're really tight knit and I, I want to make sure they do okay. So I'm doing everything I can. I also put aquarium salt in here and I've switched up the flow. I turned up the flow on the filter, changed out the filter uh, media, also, you can see I moved the coconut out of like intense hiding right into the middle of my aquascape. I moved the tree. So this whole aquascape, which started because I lost the female and it turned out she was up under the, the let's see if, can I get rid of this glare? So she was up under this sponge filter in the, the hollow center. And I pulled it up out of the tank and I'm looking all around and the tank is devoid of plants at this point. There's a video on me rescaping it on my channel, but uh, no fish. And I'm like, how can she disappear? She's nowhere around the edges. She didn't jump and her male is there. 
But it turned out she was up in there, and she had buried under the sand, sand or gravel. Yeah, turn off the sun, right? I'm going to go to another tank in a minute so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but, yeah, so <clears throat> all that has been done. The salt, the erythromycin, the uh, general cure, which is uh, a dewormer, antifungal. I haven't done the ick. Uh, treatment because there's nothing surface there's no nothing apparently wrong other than gasping i thought maybe ammonia poisoning but i'm checking uh you know gh kh water parameters i have a tds meter um i have a a, a couple other uh electrolyte meters the electrolytes were low i increased those and then i basically uh tweezer fed him for two days when he was in the worst of it. Now he'll turn his head and grab some food, but he's still not eating a ton. He's lost some weight. So, oh boy, you know the song, that terrible song, the bluest skies you'll ever see are in Seattle. The dun 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 dun. I don't know the rest of the words. I just know that 1960s or 50s. Maybe it was for the World's Fair. I'm not sure. Perry Como, I think, did it. Cuomo. So, we do have blue skies in Seattle. And the mountains are out, so that's that's good. That's a change of pace around here. Um, so over here, let me see if I've got any news going on in this neck of the woods. Uh, and then I'm going to sit down with y'all and just talk a little bit about some history and what you'd like to see, because I want to hear about it. So in this tank, I have uh, Malawa shrimp, which are hanging out up here because those sneaky little buggers were actually, and this is a treat. So, whoa, man, sorry guys, the zoom, as I said, the no focus, no zoom on this live stream thing. So, uh, come on, come on, zoom in, zoom out. I want you guys to see that this uh, Malawa shrimp is buried finally. So the the other shrimp, these are kind of cool shrimp. They're, they're not like really bright colored or anything. They either are pink, clear, tan, or black, but they can turn those colors on a dime. Yeah, there you go. So now you can see, oh, now it unfocused. Great. Well, you can see that she's got this one. She's got uh, lots and lots and lots of berries in her. And so I'm debating whether I want to put her in here, but then I could get her confused with the Caridina. Doesn't matter, they can't, the Neo Caridina, they can't, uh, yeah, have a good time. Take it easy down the wormhole. Um, oh, hello. Hey, what's up, Xenon Cor Corbett? How's it going? Is that like Corbett? Oh, no, that's Corbin Dallas. I'm thinking of the fifth element. Uh, but in any case, what else? So we've got those up here separated because I was selecting my best male uh, blue uh, dream shrimp. I'm hoping to be on, uh, well, I'm on his Patreon now, Lucas Bretz. So I'm hoping to get a hold of some of his original uh, grade A blue shrimp to, to have in this tank and have that be the Neocaridina species in this uh, aquascape here. This aquascape needs some serious trimming. Uh, it's kind of an Iwagumi style where the rocks are the main feature. So even though I've got 20 some species of plants and a bunch of crypts and stuff in here, uh, it, it kind of says, oh yeah, thanks for reminding people uh, about the uh, hitting the like button. That's always great when people like and uh subscribe yeah my segues are real real bouncy uh <laughs> when it comes to these live streams i'm still learning guys i'm a youngin but this shrimp is bold he's just cruising we got daniels and other folks around the shrimp seem to think that these rocks are theirs and it's like pride rock most of the daytime not even the nighttime the blue shrimp oh yeah there's one right up there the blue shrimp just hang out there 24 7 uh on these rocks and i've got maybe a dozen blue shrimp in there but only three are lucas and i'm trying to get uh i'm trying to find a 10 gallon tall tank to put some endler guppies or chili rasboras uh 
like a brain brand name or something. Um, I mean, Aquion at like Petco or PetSmart, those are always cheap. That's what this is. I, I waited till their dollar a gallon sale and they're literally selling it with the cost of uh, advertising and having someone working. If you calculate it all out, they're like not making a profit off those. It's the pump and all the other stuff you buy that they make the profit off during that sale. But I've also got Celestial Pearls in here. I got this beautiful strain of them uh, from Steve Waldron, who uh, is a aquascaper. He did some aquascaping for uh, Amazon's headquarters. This beautiful, like, I don't even know, 7,000 gallon naturescape. And then uh, that Tom Barr started on that project, and then uh, Steve finished it. He also owns aquariums, and so I've been talking to him. I've sourced this rock locally. It's a jadeite, if you can see that green in it. Um, and I think one of the Bigs Box stores just started the one. Yeah, Pet uh, actually PetSmart. If you go to uh, the – oh, who is it? I don't know who posted it, but Google, like – $20 fish tank at pet uh, PetSmart because there somebody just came up with like how you can do the coupons and get it for like 15 or 20 bucks for a, a 10 gallon or a 15 gallon tank I think it was if you use an online rebate and a mail-in rebate so I also have my uh, which was sold to me as a calico you guys aren't seeing it because of how bright the light is on it, but this is actually coming out to be bright, bright pumpkin orange he's turning. And so I think he's a super red that just has some other marking uh, Ancestress Pleco uh, on him. And then we've also got uh, Mike, uh, what is it, uh, Erythromicron, uh, Daniel slash Rasbora, whatever you want to call them. They've been re reclassified a couple times. And then we've got Gold Ring Danio still in the tank. An Auto Synchless. We put an, a Siamese Algae Eater in here. Let me zoom back out, guys. Sorry. And uh, they did not get along well with the, the fish. They were real bitey. And these fish went from being shy and then like I hit a threshold at like 15 of these little nano fish essentially. And they produce very little bio load and all of a sudden they're just out in front like it's nothing. Whereas before they hid and hid and hid. I got rid of the, rid of the ruby tetras out of the tank and that really helped. They're, they're over with the cribs. They're a very shy fish and so that helped uh, to kind of undither uh, that also the nearite snails are helping cleaning up some of these rocks. I'm also still breeding my uh, super red, although you can't probably see it. Well, maybe this light. These are like a super red ram's horn with a white shell, it or translucent shell. But there's also some of them that have an opaline gold shell. And those I'm hoping that I can like send to people too who want them because snails and plants travel a lot easier than fish. And these baby fish are the endlers that folks were excited about that I'm still giving away, but they're just, you see how big they are. So haven't been able to sex them or anything. They're also Lucas Brett's 11-year-old uh, strain of rainbow Leopard endlers, you can see them. Where are the adults? They're hiding, and they don't have very good color today. Uh, well, you can see them in my other videos, but I just wanted to show you that. There's one ruby tetra left that I couldn't catch. They're super quick when they're, when they're being shy. And uh, another little trick that I mentioned in another video a while back, a uh, live one, was that around here we have really low TDS. It's like 28. And so you can tell if you need more calcium, your KH, your GH, you can tell those things by watching your snails. So ram's horn snails are great in that sense that you can see how well their shells are forming. And like this one formed very poorly for a while. And so I got some coral and I got some uh, calcium rich uh, cuttlefish, cuttlebone and uh, put that in the filter. The shrimp are putting on a show for you guys. I don't know why they're doing this but they're like going crazy so in here right now we have uh some black ram's horn snails that somebody sent me which was very nice and cold shrimp that uh are waiting on a home plus my 
painted fire reds, which I'm down to only five uh, adults. And then over here in the big tank, let me, I'm gonna have to plug in my phone again too, uh, but it's got bad glare too. Hey, what's up, Bob? So over in this tank, we also have, I put all my cold red shrimp in here that weren't painted fire grade, and they've actually colored up and grown at three or four times the rate of any of the other shrimp in the other places. And they're just all over the place in less than a month's time. So I'm just going to let them go wild with also some Rileys or really Red Rileys, if you want to call them that. They're a good cleanup team. This tank will literally hold a thousand of them. My Lemon Tetras are... Man, that glare is awful. Uh, so the Lemon Tetras are doing well. These are the Orange-Eyed Lemon Tetras, special breed of them, or strain of them, I should say. And the one that came to the aquascaping contest is here, alive and well. Plus, we have, oh, they're real shy, but we've got the Malawi, or Malawi, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's not Malawi, but it is M-O-L-I-W-E uh, cribs. I have six of them. And I'm taking care of my buddy's house, and he has 18 fish tanks. So I'm probably going to do a video over there for you guys. His, his house is all ADA and all uh, all set up like crazy business. So, um, yeah, I'm plugging my phone in. Did you not get the tank? Oh, I did. I did. So let me – hold on one sec. Let me charge with you guys. Uh, or actually, we're at 7% right now. I can run out and show you the tank real quick, and then I'm going to sit down and uh, and chat with you guys from a stationary location. So – the tank that I got to keep was, so out here we've got, I got to keep some filters, and then this is what's left of the 500 pounds of stone. This was the jadeite. It doesn't look like much now. Check out my video of when it was wet. Uh, like, I have a video set called, like, 500 pounds of jade or whatever. Uh, I chipped that out of some mountains, and then I also found some others uh, on a slack pile on the side of the road. Slag pile. I also have some... Uh, acrylic sealed fossil stone over here but it does leach uh and increase the hardness plus it leaches carbon uh which you can see like carbonized leaves but this is the tank from the aquascaping contest right here and it is made out of glass that was originally intended for a uh what was it i think a, a 250 gallon tank so it's like a third of an inch or more thick and it's just it's crazy sturdy and it's got a nice wooden <clears throat> or acrylic and wooden like layered base and it's seven gallons so the main thing is I don't have any rimless in the house and I really want some but mm -hmm. that's not quite up to size for me um why am I leaving it outside like that, poor tank? That's abuse, I'm reporting you. <laughs> uh, yeah, <clears throat> in my neighborhood, uh, they'll steal a lot of things, but a fish tank is not one of them. Okay, so, pardon me, I'm coming into the room with the best Wi-Fi, the, the junk room, which, <clears throat> okay, I'm plugged in now. I'm plugged in. We've got all of our old junk and my art in here and boxes and things like that let me flip it around because you guys don't care what my room looks what, what our spare junk room looks like full of stuff but hello so we're at five percent on my battery and hopefully this will will uh charge while while we're we're chatting so yeah that tank it's not outside by my wishes it's outside by my wife's wishes she wants me to not have another tank she says five is enough we have one in the bedroom that's a teeny one but then we've got uh four upstairs so a 40 gallon 20 long 20 tall and a 10. if i lose you guys it's because my phone didn't charge as fast as it's being drained on the live stream and i'm sorry about that ill-prepared but I was watching another uh, Rob's live stream and then I had a phone call before that so I haven't had time to charge it with my wife having hers plugged in on the outlet where we were at earlier so but in any case I wanted to answer some questions if you have any but more so I now that we got a sizable number of people uh, 
I try to be a good husband, you know, I would have 30 tanks if I had no wife, uh, but, and I did when I was younger, I, I had a whole bunch, and the other thing I did was, and this was like irresponsible, I'm gonna admit it to you guys, confessions on YouTube, but I had, uh, I had all sorts of fish that I had let go in retention ponds in my neighborhood that had drains that were like high and they spilled down into the retention ponds, but there I'd never seen them fill up enough, but I'd see like great her great blue herons and stuff come swoop in and, and eat things. And so, yeah, <laughs> I did that. I put some, nothing crazy, but I put uh, guppies in there and I put a turtle in there that was a local turtle anyways salamanders but when i was a kid i was just obsessed with all things aquatic just buy another tank it's easier to, yeah you're right it is easier to ask forgiveness but the thing is i have to buy the tank when she's like out of town for the day or something or for the the night so that i can set it up all nice mm -hmm. and if it were angelfish or something along those lines she'd be she'd love it she she likes the big pretties and she hates my my nano fish, uh, you know. So, oh, hey, Mick, you got the Samsung thirty watt light today. What do you think of it, Mick? Isn't that thing crazy? It's like, man, that thing is like the bat signal. It is bright. <clears throat> Be careful on how hot it gets. Make an angel tank. Yeah, you know, discus and angel. I have a spot in my heart for them. They're real pretty, uh, but. I had so many angels growing up that I kind of got off of that train. And now I really love, if I got a big tank, I think I would do like maybe like 150 Rasbora uh, of some sort. Or maybe, I don't know, Lemon Tetras. I really like those Lemon Tetras because they've got this, my hair is just out of control uh, got it on your 20 gallon. Yeah, the fish. Yeah, that'll be insane. Is it a 20 tall? Because I hope so. Because if it's a 20 short, that man, the par on that's going to be insane. Uh, so the other thing, let, let me catch up with some of the chat stuff. Pearl Angel. Oh, okay, sweet, sweet Mick. Uh, Mick, where are you located, by the way? I was just curious with the name Mick. I don't see that name in the U.S. quite as frequently as I have in. Australia, New Zealand, UK, Scotland, where my family's from. I, f I did those one of those DNA tests, and I found out that I'm 23% Middle Eastern, which really surprised me. Uh, Ashkenazi Jew uh, was another big chunk, but it was like uh, Moroccan or something. So they said that could be from Italy. Wisconsin, uh, yeah. And then the rest of me, Scottish. And, and Neanderthal, I'm 5% Neanderthal, which I guess is like as high as it can go in humans, basically. That's like the high amount. So I'm a big caveman, apparently, keeping fish. You can see the Scottish, yeah. Uh, I don't know, for some reason on these videos and on this phone, my eyes don't look as blue, but in in person, they're they're pretty like grayish blue, so between that and like the sandy colored hair and uh it was stark white until i was 16 or something uh oh well thank you you love my personality that's sweet uh i used to do i used to wear kilts i participated in some highland games i'm like not very strong or athletic but uh i i uh, my battery on my phone lasted longer today <laughs> since we had one extra hour on our clock yeah, I love today, honestly, when you have the day off, like we went out to breakfast and I was like, sweet, it's earlier and I don't have to wait around because it was like 11 is when we were supposed to meet up. And for me, I want to get my day going. Come on. So, uh, but I'm also an insomniac, so I like to get up early and I end up staying up late. So sleep sometimes just doesn't happen too much, but I wanted to talk to you guys and get your opinion on what historic topics about fish and my haircut I should discuss next. Um, I'm thinking about koi. I definitely want to finish up. If you haven't seen it, I put out a 45-minute 
like brief history of and I missed lots because you can't talk about it all in that amount of time uh, but it's kind of all the way back to ancient Samaria and like Babylon and Egyptian times through today or through the 1800s up in the Victorian era the first public aquariums and then up until pre-World War II era, Art Deco aquariums and the the start of salt water being uh, a phenomenon at home and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'd like to know that the post-1950-ish age is when we start getting, like, the tchotchkes and the toy castles, and then we get tropical fish, serious fish keepers start actually keeping that Patricia, that was your favorite video so far? <clears throat> awesome. I'll work on the graphics. You know, I've got a lot of things I'd like to talk about like that, but I know I have to balance it. Um, and I, I had a feeling that, like, people who are fish nerds, quote-unquote, or history buffs or whatever, history nerds, uh, would get a kick out of that. The problem is that whenever I post one of those, there's one on uh, the Czech Republic and why the Czech Republic is such a popular like why it's number three in the world uh so i might do another one on singapore how it's become the biggest one um the biggest exporter of fish that is of tropical fish and the other the other video that's kind of similar to that i put a, put together a playlist of stuff that has history as kind of uh an emphasized in it the newer history playlist, but I'm going to weed that out and refine it as this channel gets older. It's just those videos take me weeks of researching because I'll run it by a couple people and they'll tear it apart. They're like, oh, you forgot to mention this or this happened and actually this was going on and it turns out that's not true and there's a lot of bad information online or in old books there's a lot of really bad information, which surprised me. Um, I thought for a fact that if I read a book from 1920 and they're talking about 1800s uh, fish keeping, that it would be accurate. But there was a lot of word of mouth, a lot of hearsay, that kind of stuff. So when I was checking out those sources, uh, I found the primary sources to be the most useful because you can see right there in the book what technology they had. It doesn't tell you for sure everything that they had, but it tells you, like, I mean, they're saying we change the water every day on our saltwater aquarium and we have sea anemones. We're having a hard time keeping anything other than uh, small little, uh, like, uh, rockfish and stuff like that. Uh, so the tide pool stuff actually does okay. Did you ever do a video on aquarium and tank stand designs over the years uh, like the Victorian? So in the most recent video... <coughs> the pair of them, uh, YouTube made me split them up because of the audio or file size or something weird. But if you watch those, the history of aquarium, you can skip towards the end and just look through the slides. And there's some pictures from a private collection. I forget the guy's name off the top of my head, I'm bad with names of people, uh, good with dates, but I forgot his name and he has this amazing, collection and he's somebody in the fish industry like seagrass someone or other or fluval someone or other but uh yeah he has a really cool collection and he's retrofitted some of the tanks and so that's pretty sweet to see it's funny i've had allergies all day because our like uh cherry trees are blooming outside and everything spring is coming <laughs> so you're gonna hear me a lot more stuffed up sorry guys and also my eyes are even like at this angle talking downward rather than standing my eyes are getting puffy so let's let's correct all right i don't want you guys to see my craft closet but to me doesn't that look more like a fish rack enclave than a craft closet i mean really like if we're talking like practicality here you have a drip system like right up in here for the water changes the bathrooms literally on the other side of the wall we're renting but i mean i could maybe poke a little teeny hole just like hmm. i don't know something to consider i've patched worse dry hall dry wall holes uh in my college days so yeah <clears throat> and i've framed before too so i actually could fix that before we moved out if i wanted to 
but my wife doesn't want it to be insane until I, uh, well, she thinks I should have to make money off of it for it to get any larger in our small place. Uh, but yeah, I think my wife would like the fact that I'm condensing my aquarium stuff. The problem is that I have a lot of hobbies, uh, over the years, you know, I go mushroom collecting, I go fishing, I carve wood, I carve stone, I sculpt, uh, I paint, you know, there's a lot of things that I do that are messy, and so fish tanks and plants and dead fish and the smell of fish food and fish tanks, uh, she's afraid that this round I, I will get bored with it at some time, and yeah. I should jump over to Seattle on one weekend and hang out. It's only a two-hour flight. Yeah, where are you, wait, where are you at, Waterbox? Are you in, like, Boise or something, or... Um... Yeah, because you should come out to Seattle. It's a cool city. I could show you some... Oh, Los Angeles. Yeah. I should come to Los Angeles. There's a lot of stuff going down there. Uh... I haven't been, in, been to L.A. in a while, but I do have plans, hopefully going to San Francisco maybe next month. It, we have a friend getting married, and money's been really tight lately because I've been working in between gigs and kind of slanging shrimp as, like, a side job. Um, but, yeah, so between that and then the fact that I'm a graphic designer and artist, I might share with you guys. I didn't want to be, like, hawking my stuff. Good night, Patties, Aqua Worlds. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. That's a pretty fish you have in your profile picture. Uh, but, yeah, because I make art, I haven't wanted to, like, market that aspect of myself on the channel. But maybe I will do a little bit of, like, uh, show some art here and there or make, like, one video of it. Uh, yeah, please come home, Patricia. Come check out GSAS and the the club here. I'm sure everybody would love more fish, fam. Uh, we had a mystery plant of the month, right? Yeah. Um, oh, good night. I was like, mm, Patty, is that Indian? What is that? Uh, but yeah, so I wanted to talk also about the impact of wars on fish. So like... World War II, <clears throat> um, how World War II incredibly impacted uh, American soldiers going abroad and seeing, like, in Hawaii or, I suppose, in, like, Iwo Jima, Okinawa, places where it was really bloody and violent, too, but there's incredible natural beauty, and they're able to snorkel and see these fish and swim with tropical fish and everything from tiki and like hawaii being popular then uh also tropical fish in general became popular in the 50s and 60s as those baby boomers those young soldiers came back and uh my wife's back on that note uh i was just telling him about my plan uh of converting the closet into a fish rack genius yeah does that mean yes that doesn't mean yes uh so but uh, it's interesting how wars have affected uh fish in the hobby right now we can't get puffer fish because there's a war in the congo there's war or conflict going on in Bangladesh or uh well yes bangladesh Thailand, Myanmar, India, the Rohingya people all throughout there that are stateless currently. Uh, there are... He, he, yeah, if she doesn't reply, that means I'm in trouble. That's right. When she walks out of the room after smiling and is dead quiet, that means no. That's okay. Uh, oh, yeah, Patty, what was going on with your shrimp? Let's try to figure out your shrimp issue here if we can. Or Patricia, I should say, not Patty. Um, but, yeah, so I want to do a video on how wars have shaped fish. But that's, like, I could do so many because there's everything from, like, how the Prussians got goldfish, like Genghis, Kong's, Genghis Khan spread uh, carp as food and introduced that. Um, the, the frontier wars in America 
brought trout and bass and all sorts of fish to ponds locally, um, you know, pumpkin seed fish and things like that that are actually quite pretty but are more sport and game fish. It's like, how much do you want to get into that? Because it's very different than aquarium, but it is interesting. Good night, Madfish Diva. Thank you for joining us. Uh, have a good one and take care. Um, MFD, that rolls off the tongue. Aren't we all divas in the fish business? I feel like everybody's got like a little bit of Asperger's or autism or something or a little bit of OCD or a whole lot or whatever, you know, or some whatever it may be. I think fish people are awesome because they they have either a creativity or a preciseness about them that they're able to both see the beauty and organic, uncontrollable, uh, natural side of things, and that, um, but there's also that probably longing under there somewhere, maybe I'll do a psychology video, uh, look into that, I also, I know it'd be kind of, like, silly, but I'm also curious in which celebrities, or famous people, more so famous people than celebrities, I don't care if, uh, Kim Kardashian has a fish tank, really, but, uh, you're socially awkward because you normally hate people. Well, yeah, I can understand that one, too. I get social anxiety, and so whereas I used to be young, go to mosh pits and concerts, now I'm at the farmer's market, like this morning, and I am like, okay, can we go? I don't need to deal with all these people anymore. Um, but, yeah, so I was thinking about doing a video of, like, George Washington. You know, he had goldfish or whatever. But thinking about famous people who had fish, or maybe, like, fish with names that are in history, there's some odd cases of, like, fish that sat on desks during important times, and you read about it when I'm reading some book, you know, on Harry Truman or something, and it turns out he had a goldfish or whatever uh, on his desk. And I don't know if it was Harry Truman. I'm just saying I was reading some book, and that comes up. So there's weird bits of trivia like that that I try to dig up, but as I investigate for this channel, as this thing is growing and everything, I'm finding more and more pieces that later I can then go back and connect in uh, now that I know what I'm looking for and not just, like, scouring all of history. So um, are there any questions about stuff or comments on stuff you'd, like, covered? Um because I also love your feedback and this time with you guys. This uh, live stream is always working on it. Anyways, Alex, the other day I found Barry Shrimp dead on the ground and another rolling over, mm -hmm. and she's buried also. So I caught her and put her in my hospital tank. Mm -hmm. Huh. Uh, Barry Shrimp dead on the ground and another one rolling over. Huh. Was there a big water change? Because a lot of times if you change that water suddenly, I've had pregnant shrimp just switch. Oh, good, good. She's doing good now. That's awesome. Uh, because, yeah, I've, I've changed water heavily and had buried shrimp abort. Yeah, so, okay, so here's the other thing about the needing more tanks to discuss more species. Our club here in Seattle is really cool, and I might, uh, yeah, I need the tanks to make the money, honey. That's why I need the more tanks. Um, well, no, but that, to be fair, though, uh, how about doing a video on what state has the best native freshwater fish for our tanks? Yeah, I'd love that. I'm sure it's probably Texas or, uh, Florida, Louisiana, um, YouTube money ain't all that great. Yeah, I know. It's not so hot. Even, like, so when Dustin from Dustin's Fish Tanks was in town, he told me what he makes monthly, like, was real frank, showed me his stats and everything, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's not going to be, like, my only job then. <laughs> not that that was the intent of this channel at all, but this was more of a, I'm going to be studying more heavily and focused trying to find connections and build community about the history of fish, aquatic things, plants, geology, water chemistry, and 
uh, come along for the ride. That's kind of the idea behind the channel. So um, I'm going to get off of here in about five minutes. If my battery doesn't die before that, it's like slowly, slowly not keeping up. I got to tilt it for some reason. Like if I hold it plugged in, uh, it's real professional, right guys? Uh, if I hold it plugged in below the electrical socket, it works better. It's very odd. It shouldn't work that way at all. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking about doing videos on that. I also am, I'm, I'm aware that I could use some editing in my videos. Uh, Washington has a lot of YouTube fish people. I did not know that. That was another reason I kind of got involved was like, I've been watching YouTube fish videos off and on, but I wasn't really interested in, um, like honing the, the craft, so to speak, actively. And I kind of pick, go through phases where I, I just like to keep, uh, you know, I like to keep, what do you call it? Like just casual fish, low maintenance, and I'll have like a Nubius and Java fern, that's it. And then other phases where I'm like, I want CO2 and I want uh, the, the hard to take care of fish that want like killy fish that want like 5.0 pH. Uh, but I am going to Portland. Uh, I was invited to come to the wet spot in Portland next weekend. My wife and I are going down there. So I will show you guys the wet spot, which is, <laughs> sounds bad, uh, which is the biggest cichlid dealer in the United States and biggest cichlid breeder. That If you look at their list, they have like 600 species usually on hand. And, uh, yeah, man, my hair is awful when I'm hanging off the bed like this. Oh, I got to cut my hair. Um, so, yeah, uh, it is a bit of a journey. John Bear's Fish Room. Welcome, Bear. Uh, I have a picture of that I drew of uh, some bears eating some fish. Uh, so, yeah, it's about a four-hour drive with traffic. It used to be like a two-and-a-half or three-hour drive, but... You pretty much consistently hit traffic right north of Portland and right south of Seattle now. You get Tacoma traffic and Olympia traffic sometimes, and that's assuming that things are going well. Seattle has awful traffic. Like, when Dustin was in town, he was like, oh, we just have to go from Seattle to Bellevue across the bridge. Like, it says it's 14 miles, so 20 minutes, right? Like, we're planning, and I'm like, no, we'll need an hour and a half that time of day. And he's like are you kidding me? What, you want to hang out with me or something more? I was like, no, it's, it's bad around here. So, uh, it took us an hour and 40. <laughs> no, uh, but it, it, it's very, yeah, SeaTac, brutal, uh, the I, 405 I5 interchange, brutal. I mean, I think it's worse than LA. I've been to LA. I've been to, I've been to most, I think I've been to every big city in the U.S., every city over half a million people. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's up there with Manhattan or parts of L.A., San Francisco, Hawaii, even though you're moving slow no matter what, uh, downtown Honolulu's traffic is, like, infuriating. Uh, yeah, Atlanta is brutal, too. Yeah. Yeah, Patricia, I'm on Old Highway 99. I don't live far from there. I'm, like, maybe... 10 blocks from there so we hop on that to get d down south anywhere um this is not fish related though i'm sorry guys i guess this is this q a and these live things are also personality there you guys get to know me a little bit i get to talk to you get to know you see what's going on you get to see the crap in my house i want you to know that i'm just a normal guy not that you wouldn't assume that but uh yeah you know uh yeah, Brazil. Well, the, the worst place I've ever driven was in uh, Italy. I got... Okay, I saw a dead baby, and I was like, mm, is this going to be a bad comment? Let's see. So we have a question that says, Random question, I got dead baby snail shells pulling up under my heater. No predators in the tank, and only the spot has deaths. Yeah, it, uh, the heater could be burning them up. 
Usually they're smarter than that. Um, I have seen them include, and my plecos I've seen on the heater, and and when I touch it, it's hot. Like you'd think that they would know not to do that. Maybe there's nothing in nature that causes them to evolve to realize that. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I would assume that that's going on, or you could have a parasite. Um, I yeah, definitely make sure that the flow isn't just pushing them there. That's definitely the first line of action. Because also, you know, your heater has a flow. It, hot air rises and the cool air sits. So it could just be that you're... you're uh... So when they die, a lot of times they have air in them because they use that as a bladder to go up and down and uh, as ballast. And it could just be that the the cooler air, they sink down and the hotter air they're floating around up there, and then it sinks eventually. I don't know. So I'd check that. But other than that, there are parasites that affect snails. Also, if you have ever treated with... Because it's kind of odd to just have snails dying anyways. I don't have a ton of snail deaths on my hands uh, unless I've treated with some sort of dewormer or something. So that's a little odd. Also, copper is really bad for snails. So you have copper in your tank or aluminum uh, somehow in your water, ammonia can be bad. Um, I mean, it's not good for anything, but snails can be more sensitive to copper and ammonia and aluminum and zinc. So look into those things, I would say. But I think, yeah, water flow, like everyone's saying, I think that is probably how they're ending up there. But it's still odd to have baby snails dying uh, without some sort of little worm or water parameters being way off, uh, something like that. Maybe some plant videos, different ways to plant substrate pots. Yeah, um, I'd love to do that. Thanks for that idea. Uh, it reminds me too, like I did, uh, there's a couple videos if you scroll back, one's on... Um, Rotala Walikia, another one's on Kabamba, and another's on, hey, what's up, Vexing Cat? And another one is on uh, Java ferns, and those all have, like, history and some kind of quirky ties into history and biology, so you could check that out. Um, uh, the heater could it leak something bad for snails. Well, the filament is probably tungsten or aluminum or oh, what's the other metal that burns bright uh magnesium some sort of carbon magnesium uh carbonized magnesium is that what it's called any it, whatever they make filaments out of a number of things and uh in in the heater those coils they do fail they do burn up but I kind of doubt that it's leaking it. The other, the other thing is, uh, I don't know how densely your sna your tank is populated with snails. Uh, can you try turning your heater sideways uh, up at the top, maybe, and see what happens? You have to get your wife in fish. We have been in fish. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Bradley, can you help me on that? Oh, thanks, Waterbox. Waterbox, are you doing uh, live streams too? I just, I'm slacking on watching other people's live streams lately, uh, because it's just having a channel when you're trying to like research, like the history part, it actually, it takes up hours and hours of my time. And like, I like that. That's what I would be doing anyways, but I'm, I'm doing that a lot. And it's like, do I interact with YouTube? Do I get more fish? Do I do this? Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm not ready for live yet. <laughs> All right. Well, I understand. I don't have a schedule for one. I just been spending most of my time push content. Yeah. Uh, I have something to add regarding snail deaths. I was losing young snails for a while, spent a month trying to sort them out. I ended up, uh, ended up where did I go? Finding three snail leeches in my tank. I have photos. Yeah, maybe you two can kind of get together online and see the photo if you've got photos. That's what I was saying is there, there's something weird if baby snails are dying at that rate. 
Um, and then it's probably a flow thing because baby snails are so light. Uh, you could also really Bradley, cause I'm, I'm being honest here. I don't have a lot of money, but if you want to get together and do some shows and show me some fish tanks, I would be stoked. I love to see other people's setups. I love to travel. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also anti-planaria stuff, anything that's anti-parasite, a lot of them have uh, the possibility to kill uh, both cephalopods and mollusks. So not that you're keeping octo octopus, octopi, octopods, octo snail leeches. Yeah, there's leeches for everything, it seems like. Uh, Bradley, uh, maybe you can talk to me on email, uh, alexanderjwilliamson at gmail.com. It's just my whole name, Alexander J as in Johnson. Williamson, no spaces, no dots. You guys all you feel free to write me if you ever want, just to chat. I'm here. Uh, I'm lonely. No. Uh, but I would love to see your setup. Like, maybe you can send me some pictures, Bra Bradley, uh, or we could do, like, a remote thing, and you could show folks your stuff. Like, I'm always open if people want to share what they have going. Uh, I'm always open for that. My wife and I are trying to get a house eventually. Right now, I don't have a 9-to-5 graphic design job. I'm just doing gigs here and there and kind of scraping by. But once I get a 9-to-5 job, again, like back in a normal rhythm, I think I will be, uh, I will be able to have some racks, you know, uh, once it's our house, once we're not renting, even though we've been here 10 years, so in this place uh bradley can't wait to watch that would be interesting to fly you out to uh, hey man i if people want to get together i'm down whether it's video or in person i would fly out to you if i had the money uh and just you know i like traveling and talking to people and right now i actually happen to have the time in the next few months until i find a job but uh yeah so I got to end this stream. My phone is at 1%. We've held out this long, guys. Sorry this wasn't a thrilling live stream, but I, it was great to see some new faces. 75-foot greenhouse just for fish. Oh, man, that is epic. That is epic. Yeah, I've done ponds. I'll, I'll, I will be doing some videos on some ponds, too, probably coming up here soon. Uh, it's a first real spring day today where it's like 60-some degrees and sunny. And uh, hopefully I want to do some Celestial Pearl Danios, maybe some more Endlers, uh, maybe some of those baby Leopard Endlers. <clears throat> but it's great to do guppies or something that you're selectively line breeding. Tub, like out in ponds, like tubs are awesome. Uh, like Rubbermaid tubs just buried in the ground. So great for that because you can take line bread type traits and you'll end up at the end of summer with like 200 fish and you can really select which what you want and same with like the cpds if you start with a solid strain that's got nice color and everything it'll work out really well um and then you just have to figure out what to do with the other hundred because <laughs> a lot of other people like here in seattle a lot of other people do that and summer is the slowest time for fish sales that is 16 watching, 18 likes. Yeah, we come from a small community, but we are loyal and united. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll try to keep bringing you... Uh... Yeah, take care, guys. Uh, Mick, if you haven't checked out the history of the aquarium thing, that video, if you like history, fish, and trivia, it's a good one. There's two parts to it. One, One's only 15 minutes. The other one's a half hour long outdoor shrimp ponds this summer okay bradley email me please i would love to see what you're up to and chat with you about this all right guys take care uh spit spit a fire you're too late sorry uh well thank you vexing cat uh i'm teaming up with robert teamed up with dustin he's now a contact so in a few short months three months uh, I'm hoping that I'll have more time. Like, if, if, if I can parlay this into something, any sort of Patreon, I can get more tanks, 
because uh, I'm I'm obligated to get things to show you guys at that point, you know. Um, but beyond that, then I have more time to kind of say uh, this is somewhat of a job now, sweetie. Smile. All right, guys, take it easy. <laughs> Keep on swimming, all. I like that, Patricia. Swim on, guys. Have a great Sunday evening. If you're on the West Coast, enjoy the sun if you've got it. And use the b two bills for a new tank. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm getting a new tank soon. It's just going to happen. Sorry, I forgot where the camera was. Uh, but it's probably going to be a shrimp sponsored tank and Caradina. So we'll see. All right, guys, take it easy. Swim on.